Hi everyone, I'm Charlie White. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching this video. I'm pretty excited about today's video because I'm going to be showing you a tool that has literally revolutionised my DIY. Now, most of you watching this video will be DIYers like me without a sophisticated workshop. So, I think you'll be pretty interested in today's video where I'm going to be showing you my new circular saw that's enabled me to do full length sheet cuts on 2.4 metre MDF or ply, cross cuts, angled cuts, 45 degree cuts, and all that for under £160, including a 4AH battery which itself is worth between £60 and £80 pounds, depending where you buy it from. A real bargain, a really clever tool, and right now I'm going to show you how it works. Now, before I start, I just want to point out, nobody is paying me to show you this tool today. Although my tools are Ryobi, Ryobi don't even know who I am. My channel is too small for me to be receiving endorsements or sponsorships, sadly, at the moment. I'm simply sharing with you today a brilliant little tool that has changed the way I do DIY. So, I'm going to give you a bit of a run through now of what comes in this case. My father-in-law bought me this tool from B&Q about a year ago. I didn't get on very well with it to start with because I wasn't using it properly and I'll come on to that in a minute. So I really started using this properly about three or four months ago. What I really like about these tools, other than the fact that in this combi deal which is coming up on the screen now, you get a lot for your money, is that the saw itself comes in this case. Now inside, the bag is bulging a bit because I've got quite a lot of extra stuff in there that didn't come with it. I'll come on to that in a minute. This is the circular saw itself. Now, this video is all about this Ryobi tool, but it doesn't have to be. There are lots of different circular saws out there, Makita, DeWalt. Um, I happen to use a Ryobi because all of my tools are Ryobi, and the brilliant thing about Ryobi is all the batteries are interchangeable. And unlike other manufacturers, they don't change their batteries when they bring out new tools, which means you don't have a lot of redundant batteries and tools when you upgrade uh, your power tool. Also in the bag, you get this little rotatable dust port, and it's called a dust port because all the, all the sawdust comes out the back of the tool, and the idea is that you rotate it to eject the dust away from your cutting line. You'll see in a lot of the um, clips on this video that I don't always remember to do that, and in fact you can connect it to a vacuum cleaner, which also I'll be showing you in the video, which is fantastic, because it does kick out a lot of dust. You also get this little fence, which I have to say, when I bought it, when I bought this tool, I thought, what a useless little pathetic object, but actually, it's brilliant and it works incredibly well. You basically, you set the fence to the right cutting depth and then you tighten that screw there and away you go, as you'll see in the video. Now, that's where what Ryobi provides you finishes. I have accessorised with a couple of extra things before I started using the vacuum and also if I'm on site somewhere and I don't have my vacuum I wanted to have some sort of dust bag. Now amazingly Ryobi does not provide a dust bag so I have got an Evolution chop saw, it's a Rage chop saw so I bought this bag which was an optional extra for the chop saw and what's quite good about that is that actually fits onto the dust port. It's a bit ungainly but you know it does a job and it catches a lot of dust because it's only a dust bag, you'll find it still kicks out a lot of sawdust forward as well as into the bag. Whereas if you've got the vacuum attached, pretty much all of it gets sucked backwards. But nevertheless, this is a useful little add-on. Now there are a couple of other tools that I keep in the little bag that came with it. Firstly, rafter square. Now, you won't see a lot of people using one of these. I owe a shout out to my friend John Millman who does a lot of work with us. Uh, he's a carpenter by trade and he showed me this tool and how to use it in conjunction with the circular saw. Again, that'll be coming up in the video shortly. And finally, a couple of these Axminster clamps, which I believe are modelled on the Fez tool range. That's about as close as you'll ever get to anything about Fez tools in any of my videos. These are brilliant because they're a great way of clamping your wood down whilst you're cutting it. Now, before we get cracking, I will just show you a few little features around the saw itself. We've obviously had a look at the fence just now and the rotatable dust port. On the side of the saw here, there's a lever which enables you to adjust the cutting height and that is really important as I'll show you in a minute. And the other th thing to point out here is we've got this adjustment 
lever here which enables you to set the saw to cut at angles between 90 degrees going all the way down to 45 actually it goes up to 56 degrees there so it's a really simple tool to use as usual details of all the tools I've used today will be in the description at the end of this video including a uh, replacement blade I just bought this recently from Machine Mart for 1799s all those details will be available in the description now before you start using a circular saw you have to get the cutting depth right Remember me saying at the start that I had this saw for a while and wasn't using it at all because I just couldn't get on with it. Basically I started cutting a piece of 25mm ply like this and I had the blade as far down as it could go like that and basically the blade wandered across, I couldn't get a straight cut, it jammed, it was an absolute nightmare, I thought what a load of rubbish. But all I was doing wrong is I didn't set the blade to the right height which is basically take that away and pretend we're cutting this piece of 18mm MDF here. You want the blade to be just poking out below the sheet of wood you're cutting like that and then lock it into place. Since I've done that the saw has worked brilliantly and it hasn't wandered one bit. So you've got the rotating dust port, we've had a look at the dust bag but there's one other thing you can do so that if you are cutting wood in your garage like this you don't have too much sawdust flying around in the air. Henry vacuums come with this little attachment which basically means you can use the the different brushes without having to use the metal attachment piece. This is actually really useful for this tool because we can then basically put that into the vacuum nozzle and then we can just put the vacuum nozzle straight into the rotatable dust port. Now what's been the real game changer for me with this tool is it's enabled me to cut full length sheets of MDF. Before now I was traipsing off to the timber merchants, DIY shops, having to get wood cut to size and then loading it into the car, into the van and then taking it home. With this tool you can order sheets to your door, store them in the garage and get them cut. Now I know what you're going to say now, how do I cut full length sheet of wood uh, just in a sort of garage or outside the front of my garage. Those of you who watch my channel regularly will see that I've recently adapted some Stanley saw horses into a work table. I really recommend you buy yourself a pair of these. They're about 28 to 35 pounds at your local DIY store depending on which ones you go for. This is my workbench that I made recently which I'm about to adapt to make it a bit more portable. This has become an absolutely fantastic tool in my workshop and you'll see in a lot of my videos I'm using this increasingly often to cut sheets of wood. But don't worry if you haven't got one of these or if you don't want to go to the trouble of making something like this, it really doesn't matter. Because all you need to do when you're buying a couple of sheets of MDF and getting them delivered is literally put the first one on your sawhorse and that creates a perfect table for you then to put the other sheets on top to do your cutting. Or if there's only one sheet you need, put the first sheet on the sawhorse, put a couple of sheets of timber underneath the sawhorses themselves to protect them and then again you can start making your cuts. So now you've got your workbench, let's run through all the things that this little circular saw can do. Right, there are a few ways you can cut long sheets of MDF or timber accurately and cleanly. If you're cutting close to the edge of the sheet, the most obvious way is to use the fence provided with the tool itself because that gives you the ability to cut a very thin sliver right up to about 140 million from the edge of the piece of timber. This is obviously only a narrow sheet, but if you've got a full width 140 or wider, sheet of timber and you want to cut down the middle you've got two ways you can do this. You can take a long straight piece of timber like I've got here, clamp it down at both ends of your sheet and then use the long edge of the timber as a guide for the circular saw. Or you can make yourself a saw guide like I've done here and clamp that down and then your circular saw literally runs along the guide and cuts your sheet of timber to this line here. But don't look too closely at this saw guide, I didn't make it very well. The guide section itself isn't wide enough which means there's too much flex 
in the guide itself. So stay tuned, in a couple of weeks I'll be showing you how to make a really good saw guide for your circular saw. Okay, check out this little trick for carrying out a perfect right angle cut using your circular saw. I'm using my rafter square as a guide. And then I simply switch it over and carry on. And you can even use the rafter square in exactly the same way to do 45 degree cuts. And you can even use the circular saw to create bevel edged cuts as I needed to do recently when I was putting skirting board in in my spare room and I needed to join two pieces together along a long wall seamlessly. So the circular saw was brilliant for that because it enabled me to create two really good consistent bevel edged cuts that I could then join together in an invisible joint along the wall. So that's it, it's a really useful, versatile little tool and its uses don't end there. You can also cut chamfered pieces of timber with a bit of careful setting up of the guide, as you see here. So if, like me, you've been struggling to work out how to cut long sheets or small cuts, whatever, of timber without going down to your local DIY store, hardware store, timber merchants. I hope this video has inspired you to go out there, get yourself a circular saw so that you can do all this yourself. Do let me know in the comment section below if you've got any questions or other uses that you've found for your circular saw. It's really great to hear from you. Well, most of you. <laughs> and if you've liked this video, please click on the like button below. And finally, if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.